Hello, I am Daniel Ionita, here to start the second session of our journey into Romanian poetry in English. In the first session, we had the introduction to the whole series, as well as a brilliant poem of a okay but not great poet. I'm talking about the moment of grace of uh, the silver fanged boar by Stefan Augustin Doinash. Whoever wants to catch up with that uh, uh, session can do so. It's session number one. This is session number two. And today, well, today we are dealing with a superstar of uh, the Romanian poetry pantheon. No, it's not a morning star. It's not the brilliant Mihai Minescu. That will have to wait. Um, I need to be in the mood for it. It will come. It will come. I'm talking about Lucian Blaga, May 1895, May 1961. Blaga was a philosopher, he was a, a poet, a playwright, a translator, a journalist, an academic, a diplomat. He was a commanding personality of the interwar period. He held a professorship of cultural philosophy at the University of Cluj until 1948. He was then dismissed for refusing to lend support to the communist regime installed at the time and afterwards employed as a librarian at the same university. I would put Blaga in the top 10 Romanian poets. I know art doesn't lend itself to sports ranking tables. However, being enamored with sports as I am, I find that analogy difficult to resist and Blaga would be up there for me. He was forbidden from publishing until 1969, about eight years after his death, because he was regarded as an exponent of idealism rather than the required socialist realism of the day. Described as a, poem of, a poet of light, in fact that is the title of his first, first volume, published in 1919, The Poems of Light, uh, of nature, of love, of peace. Blaga, says Eugen Lovinescu, the critic, uh, critic and historian, is perhaps the most original creator of images known to Romanian literature, images that are both surprising and profoundly poetic. And I agree with all that. But to me, beyond the beauty and imagery and idealism, I find Blaga's poetry extremely profound. There is tremendous depth to its beauty. Not just beauty and idealism and love and peace, etc., etc. And while I will recite his best known poem, most Romanians already know what I'm talking about, a poem which, like the previous Silver Feng Bo by Doinash, is in all the high school manuals and university curricula, etc., etc. About 10 years ago, I had this interesting email exchange with uh, Miss Dolly Blaga, the octogenarian daughter of Lucian Blaga and in charge of his literary estate. She just received from the publisher the list of poems uh, which I wanted to include in the first anthology of uh, Romanian poetry in English, with the view of uh, approving her father's presence in it and also the poems that, uh, that will represent him. Uh, she was incensed. She found my email uh, talking to Anna Montano, the editor-in-chief chief of uh, Minerva Publishing, and she emailed me a fiery email, uh, gave me a good serving. Why this poem? Why always this poem? It is in all the manuals of high school and university. Aren't you sick of it? Don't you know anything else? And she was right. Uh, from the perspective of small Romania and Blaga being a big fish in a small pond, if you like, the poem is everywhere and has been pervasive ever since it got published um, in 1919. It is about as well known as any Beatles tune to someone alive in the 60s and 70s or 
you know, brothers in arms by dire straits to someone alive in the 1980s. You'll just kind of know it. It'll be in your subconscious and up there bubbling to the surface when you least expect it. However, I had to take the stance with uh, Ms. Blaga of defending the right of the English language reader of you, not of the Romanian poetry reader or the, high, or the Romanian high school student, etc., saturated with it uh, on the subject. I remember my good friend and uh, literary critic uh, Alex Stefanescu saying that if you are children to hate a piece of literature, just put it in a school manual. But back to Mrs. Uh, Blaga. I made this argument that we cannot deprive the English language poetry lover of this masterpiece and I made the offer to translate another Blaga poem of her choice uh, to go along with it. Her reply was both pacif pacifying and, and kind, in fact. She calmed down a lot. She said she would trust me with picking another poem and can I please do that? Of course I did. Uh, in fact, uh, this edition I talked about yesterday, uh, Testament 400 Years of, of Romanian Poetry, contains not just two, but four uh, Lucian Blaga poems, meaning, as I mentioned, that I rate him very highly, because only a handful of uh, poets are represented with three or four, four poems. Um, some of them are represented with two, and the vast majority of about 370 poets in this volume are represented by one single poem. I will also give you a second Blaga poem today, one called Eve. Yes, that one from the Garden of Eden fame, Adam's Rib, etc. etc. It is a risky poem these days um, because most people without a poet, poetic or philosophical understanding and without a sense of humor, we can't afford one these days, uh, might jump to applying labels such as sexism or even misogyny, etc. I do not see it like that. To me, Eve is about the beauty of mystery. In fact, both poems, if I'm stopping to think about it, are about the mystery, are about the bedazzlement of the unknown. And it is ironic because we live in a world um, which has not for a long time been comfortable with mysteries, with the unknown. We live in a positivist world, we live in a world of data, of information, of uh, evidence. Knowledge is power. Mysteries are unknown is not. This series um, is filmed during the time of the coronavirus. SARS-2. And everybody is freaking out. Government, scientists, the population, the whole world. Why? Because this pandemic, while not killing anywhere near the numbers of, let's say, the flu of 1918, um, nor are the projections anywhere near as dire as that, is still unknown. The scientists haven't quite figured it out. There is no vaccine out for it. The politicians don't know what to do, so everybody is freaking out. More people might die of fear than of the actual virus in itself. Well, Blaga takes a different stance. He gets cozy with the unknown. He embraces the mystery. He recognizes its beauty, even if spooky. So, here we go. We'll have two poems, one after the other, in English first, as usual, and then I'll follow with the same two poems in Romanian. I will start with I will not crush the crown of this world's wonders, which Romanian viewers already anticipated, I'm sure, and then Eve. See what you make of them and please leave us a comment, whether you liked it, didn't like it, was it sexist, was Blaga a sexist, misogynist pig? Am I for adding Eve there, or is it indeed about the beauty of mystery? I do not crush the crown of this world's wonders. Lucian Blaga I do not crush the crown of this world's wonders, and do not kill with my mind 
the mysteries which I encounter on my way, in flowers, in eyes, on lips, and all the tombstones. Others' bright light might extinguish the spell of the obscure, the enigmatic, hidden in the depths of darkness, but I, with my light, augment the world's enigma, just like the moon with its white ray, which won't diminish, but quivering increases the night's puzzle. In the same way do I enrich the shadows of horizons with wondrous awe of holy riddles, and all that's undiscerned transforms itself in even larger undiscernments under my gaze. For I'm in love with flowers, with eyes, with lips, and all the tombstones. Eve. When the serpent gave Eve the fruit, he spoke to her with a voice resounding, chiming through the leaves like a silver bell. But it so happened that later he whispered something in her ear, softly, very softly, something which is not written in the scriptures. Not even God heard exactly what he whispered to her, even though he was trying to listen too. And Eve didn't want to tell Adam either. Ever since, the woman hides a secret underneath her eyelids and moves her eyelashes as if to say that she knows something which we don't. And no one does, not even God. Eu nu strivesc corola de minuni a lumii. Eu nu strivesc corola de minuni a lumii și nu ucid cu mintea tainele ce le întâlnesc în calea mea, în flori, în ochi, pe buze ori morminte. Lumina altora sugrumă vraja nepătrunsului ascuns în adâncim de întuneric, dar eu... Eu cu lumina mea sporesc ca lumii taina și întocmai cum cu razele ei albe luna nu micșorează, ci tremurătoare mărește și mai tare taina nopții, așa îmbogățesc și eu întunecata zare cu largi fiori de sfânt mister și tot ce e neînțeles se schimbă în neînțelesuri și mai mari sub ochii mei, căci eu iubesc și flori, și ochi, și buze, și morminte. Eva Când șarpele întinse Evei mărul, îi vorbi cu un glas ce răsuna printre frunze ca un clopoțel de argint. Dar s-a întâmplat că îi mai șopti apoi și ceva la în ureche. Încet nespus de încet, ceva ce nu se spune în scripturi. Nici Dumnezeu n-a auzit ce i-a șoptit anume, cu toate că a ascultat și el. Și Eva n-a voie să-i spune nici lui Adam. De atunci, femeia ascunde sub ploape o taină și își mișcă geana, parcă ar zice că ea știe ceva ce noi nu știm. Și nimeni nu știe, nici Dumnezeu chiar. 